What's up, family? Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger back on our video. Uh, this one's going to be about how to overcome uh, not only lust, but also temptations and some things that helped me along my journey to share with you guys. So let's get, let's go. The number one thing that when it comes to, you know, because we are, we all are battling the flesh. We all are battling lust, temptations, and all different vices, right? The one thing that I have learned on my five year walk with Christ is that the rewards is the reason what helps me keep going, okay? So the number one thing is God rewards those who endure temptations, okay? Uh, if you even look at Joseph, when um, the Egyptian, one of the, the wives was trying to get him to have intercourse with him and he resisted it, right? He fleed away. And even though he faced, you know, the things that he went through, he he became the king of, he gained favor. God gave him favor through the, the Egypt king and he became the king of uh, Egypt. And he wasn't even an Egyptian, he was an Israelite, okay? So, he rewarded him. And even though his wife tried, uh, the Egyptian wife tried to, you know, belittle him and, you know, call him a liar and stuff like that, the truth eventually got exposed. And through him resisting that temptation, that urge, but you gotta think about it, when a woman's all up on you, we try to touch up on you and stuff, a lot of men in his shoes would be like, oh, even though she's married, even though she's, you know, has a husband, a lot of men would be like, oh, I don't, I don't care. But he resisted that. And he, look how blessed Joseph was, even all that he went through, and there's a Bible verse I'm going to read. This is James chapter 1, verse 12 to 15 says, Blessed is a man that endure temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Okay? And it says that, Let no man say when he has tempted that I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then lust hath conceived, and it bring forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, it brings forth death. So there's a balance of this. When it comes to knowing that when I'm resisting these uh, temptations and, and lust, the flesh and stuff like that, that yes, God rewards me. And also I know when I do fall into that pit, because we all fall short, the Bible says it brings forth death, okay, spiritual death. So I understand it brings the fear of God upon me. So I know before I act on certain things that, okay, I know that that will lead to spiritual death. That will lead to destruction, okay? And this is why it's important, number two, is, you know, be, con be conscious of the music you listen to, okay? I know a lot of people don't really empathize the power and the importance of what you're feeding your ears and your eyes. You know, I talk about this too all the time, which this could be like a bonus one, is guarding your eyes. Um, you know, in the Bible, throughout the scriptures, I think Job made a covenant with God that he won't, um, he will guard his eyes. Even David did too as well in the book of Psalms, talks about that. Also too, the music you listen to. If you're listening to music that I'm gonna smash her, I'm gonna smash, you know, this and that, uh, you know, lust type of things, you're feeding that to your ears, it's gonna make you wanna do that, okay? Saying, the, uh, the Bible even says that saying was like a control of music in heaven in Ezekiel, okay? So saying knows when he's using these puppet, these puppet masters, these, you know, celebrity, you know, the rappers and hip hop artists, the, the celebrities, right? Who sold their soul to the devil. And their music is just literally here to keep you at a lower state, to keep you in your flesh, okay? And you're, when you're listening to that music all day, okay? You listen to that music all the time. What do you think is going to happen in your life, okay? You're listening to a dude talking about, I'm, 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 getting, I'm sleeping with 10, 20, 30 women, you know, that type of music, right? What makes you think you're going to want to do that same thing too, okay? You're going to want to open your phone and hit up, you know, hit up, go on the day naps, you know, and all that's all those type of things okay so always be careful guys the music that you listen to is very powerful never underestimate the music you listen to okay now if you listen to one or two songs is that going to get you to be tempted no but if you make that a daily habit every single day and listen to the type of music best believe that you're going to find yourself battling your flesh is going to start battling against temptation and things that should, could have been avoided if you didn't listen to that type of music okay so Always, guys, also, this led me, you know, there's no Bible verse that says don't listen to a, a music that talks about, you know, sinful activities, but the Bible talks about wisdom. When you have wisdom, wisdom will alert you and it's let you know that you can't be listening to this type of music because if you do, you're going to be finding yourself battling lusts and temptations and things that could have all been avoided, okay? And I put Proverbs chapter 4, the whole entire chapter, because that verse goes over wisdom the whole entire chapter. So, yeah. Number three is speak life and power okay what i mean by that i remember back when i was struggling with like pornography corn right i say corn but anyways when i was struggling with that i know i would always find myself saying that i can't overcome this like this is just too hard i would find myself saying that and then wisdom alerted me and i was led to this bible verse this is in proverbs chapter 18 verse 20 to 21 says a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth 
okay, and the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Okay, verse 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Okay, so death and life is in the power of the tongue, and they that eat the fruits, uh, they that uh, love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So you want to start speaking power, saying, I can't overcome this, even though in the midst of you're not being able to overcome this, you want to start, you know, speaking this, speaking life, like I'm going to be able to overcome this sin. I'm gonna be able to walk in my in my power. You know, I'm a strong man or a strong woman, and I, and I, the flesh will not get the best of me. I live and I'm I'm walking in the spirit. You gotta start speaking this, bro. Speak this to your reality, and it will manifest in your life. Speak good. I just gave you guys a Bible verse, and I found myself back then always saying negative things, man. I didn't even, I wasn't even conscious of this. I wasn't even aware that all this negative things that was coming out of my mouth until I was led to this Bible verse, and I completely changed up. Even like when I'm showering or when I'm just casually walking around, I speak good things, positive things, and I can see the blessings, I can see the fruits that I'm eating thereof. So always, guys, if you're struggling, stop telling yourself that that I can't do this, or you know, stop being negative, okay? You know, speak positive, speak life, speak power, okay? And this definitely helped me out a lot too, guys. My wisdom all, all correlates, everything I'm going over all correlates to wisdom, so we gotta get wisdom and get understanding. Okay, number four is the fourth way, how to, biblical ways to overcome lust is forsake the ungodly, the degenerates, okay? I put, the Bible, what, people in the world today call it degenerates, but degenerates, but the Bible calls them reprobates. It's all the same thing. For those who don't know what it is, it means pretty much a mind that feeds off of wickedness, feeds off of sin, okay? That's pretty much what it is. And that's like people of the world, they're usually degenerates, reprobates, okay? The Bible talks about that in Romans chapter one, verse 28 to 32. Those who are reprobates, what they like to do. Okay. Um, also the foolish. Okay. Proverbs says in um, Proverbs chapter nine, verse six says, forsake the foolish and live. Okay. And so it means if you're not, if you're, if you're keeping company with fools, remember the Bible says those who keep company with fools shall be destroyed. Okay. But those who keep company with the wise shall, you know, gather and increase. Okay. So when you, well, the reason why I say forsake the ungodly, because what are ungodly people doing? If you're around five other people, right. And their whole entire life revolves, revolves around getting that woman, try to smash this and that, their whole life revolves around that, you're gonna be doing the same thing they're doing. So you gotta leave these people alone. And the crazy part is too, when you tell these people, you know, hey, I'm not sure, I'm not sure to be doing that no more. Even though you're not judging them, you're not condemning them, you know that that's their life, they're gonna do what they, you know, they're gonna do what they wanna do. But you, you wanna start, you know, being more spiritual. You wanna start living, man. You wanna start being spiritual life. You don't wanna live in life in sin, okay? You don't wanna be spiritually dead. Like you don't wanna be like these walking zombies out here, right? You don't wanna do that. They're gonna look at you like you're weird and crazy. Um, they're gonna actually feel like you're judging your presence around them. Okay, the Holy Spirit around you. They're gonna feel. They're gonna feel judged by just your presence. They're gonna be like, wow. You know, even the Bible. There's a Bible verse that says that um, to be upright is an abomination to the wicked, and to the uh, upright is an, is an abomination. Uh, sorry, sorry. To be upright is an abomination to the wicked. So that means that. When you're trying to walk this, not to say that you're perfect, you're sure out sin, absolutely not. But when you're trying to walk this righteous path and you know, you're know you trying to do what's godly, what's holy, be set, set apart, you know, do what God says to do. The people, the wicked people, the you know, they're gonna look down on you. They're gonna talk bad about you. And it's all a part of the matrix, all part of the assimilation. So you could expect this. When you do forsake them, they're gonna feel some type of way. Even though you're not judging them, condemning them, you don't care what they're doing, but they're gonna feel some type of way about you. Okay, remember, chosen ones, you gotta be prepared. If the world hated Christ, they're gonna hate you too. Okay, so I, I gotta say this because when they, when you do forsake these people, the people of the world, you could expect backlash. You could expect them not to be your friend no more. Um, isolate themselves from you, not to hit you up. You could expect that. All right, number five is walk in the spirit, okay? What I mean by walking in the spirit, when you walk in the spirit, your spirit becomes stronger and you no longer are paying attention to the lust of the flesh. You're no longer paying attention to, you're gonna go weeks, two, three weeks. Let's say for those who have a corn addiction, right? You're watching that every single day and you start to walk in the spirit and you know, you find yourself a week, two weeks, you know, you're on SR, semen retention, no fap. You're gonna be like, dang, I just went two weeks. The reason why you went two weeks is because you were feeding your, your spirit. The spirit is warring against your flesh. You have no you have no idea because some of us can't see through the spiritual realm, but your spirit is warring against your flesh. Feed your spirit daily, okay? Feed your spirit daily. That's why it's, it's so important. When you pray, you're feeding your spirit, okay? Um, when you do some fasting, you're feeding your spirit. When you're getting into your obedience, okay? When you're departing from sin, you are feeding your spirit. So do that, okay? Continue to do that. I know it's hard out here. Trust me, I know. 
We are all battling, myself included, but you just want to continue feeding your spirit and your spirit will do the job for you, okay? Your obedience is power, all right? And if you do fall short, just repent, get back up. Don't don't let that, you know, we all, I know a lot of people, a lot of brothers hit me up saying, oh, Mark, you know, I fell short, blah, blah, listen, bro, everyone does, so just get back up, okay? We got to be warriors out here. Don't be out here warring, okay? You want to be a warrior. All right, let's get it. Number six is to meditate on God's word and God's laws, okay? David meditated on, on the God's laws, okay? It even says in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, okay, it says that the book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou may observe to do all that is according that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success, okay? Even the Bible says that the man who loves pleasure shall be a poor man, Okay, and he who loves wine and oil shall not be rich. Okay, the man who loves pleasure shall be a poor man. So it's important to focus on self-improvement, to focus on the word of God, to keep, meditate on God's laws. And as you're doing that, do what you love to do. Okay, whatever hobby, whatever God has instilled upon you and work hard, man. And that's going to help you stay busy, stay active because you're not thinking about the temptation. When we're working all day, we're not thinking about you know, watching the website. We're not, think, we're not thinking about nothing but bettering our life. And that's how it's supposed to be as a man, okay? Now, not to say that you can't talk to a girl or if you're a sister, you can't talk to a man. Not saying that, but you're just too busy focusing on your purpose. And this is why when you meditate, when you're meditating on God's word, you're not thinking about watching corn. You're not thinking about none of that. You're thinking about you're thinking about eternal life, man. You're thinking about your soul. You're thinking about banging your spirit, right? And most people in this world, they don't care about their spirit. They don't care about the soul. A lot of these people out here, guys, are soulless. <laughs> Straight up, man. So always, guys, meditate on God's words. Get it? Meditate on God's laws, all right? Number seven, like I was saying earlier, is to work, bro. And, you know, one of the one of the biggest Bible verses that's really transform my life and that's what the word of god is supposed to do that's what the bible is supposed to do right to transform your life to to become a better version of you okay and this is it matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says seek the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you okay and this is what something you have to meditate every single day matthew chapter 6 verse 33 now you can find whatever verse you want to meditate but just for when it comes to overcoming temptation and lust the lust of the flesh you want to be meditating and seeking God's kingdom and his righteousness, okay? So these are the seven biblical ways how to overcome lust and temptation. Remember that God will reward you for your obedience, okay? Number two is be cautious. What does it mean to be conscious? To be aware, okay? Be aware of the music you listen to, okay? Number three is speak life and power. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. And this is all free, okay? When you speak blessings in your tongue, you don't have to go to the school or you don't have to do any of that. It's free. You could do this right now as you're watching this video, bro. <laughs> Number four is forsake the ungodly, the reprobates, the foolish, and live. Number five is walk in the spirit. Number six is meditate on God's word, God's laws, okay? And, or you can meditate on what Christ did, did for your life too, as well too. Uh, number seven is work. Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added to you. Guys, if you made this far, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below too as well, and share this video on all social media platforms. I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.